Hi, let's continue our discussion on chapter 11 in microbiology with universal blood and body fluid precautions. To summarize this entire video, just don't touch them. Don't come in physical contact with liquids from the patients. That's a good summary. Now let's get, talk about it in more detail. When we look at medical and dental settings, so any kind of a healthcare really related setting, we need to have very stringent procedures to prevent contact with patients' bodily fluids. Now, when we look at these control guidelines, they used to be disease specific. However, now we just have universal precautions. We assume everyone's blood carries terrible diseases. We assume all of their body fluids carry terrible diseases, and we don't want to come in contact with any of those fluids. The AIDS epidemic that occurred began in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, really spurned a re-examination of his policies. And now we have the quote, universal precautions. So we just assume everybody is terribly contagious and we prefer to err on the side of caution. So we're gonna have a lot of barrier precautions. These are going to be things like masks and gloves and goggles. We also are going to have double gloving occurring. And when we say double gloving, this is going to be a way to help further decrease the risk. So in a high risk situation, throw on the double gloves. You just, you know, they're cheap and so much less expensive to go through an extra pair of gloves than it is to have an accidental exposure. Now, many of the body coverings that are used, the gowns and aprons, are typically going to be worn during surgery, then in puncture, or other emergency procedures. So there's a good chance of splatter occurring. You want to have full body PPE, personal um, protective equipment. And when we look at dental workers, it's very important that they wear eyewear or facial shields because there's going to be a lot of squirting um, from the oral cavity. When you look at sharps, we need to assume that all sharp objects are going to be um, fomites carrying infectious diseases. So we need to put them in a sharps container. Um, the sharps container should be puncture proof so that you can pick it up and not worry about being punctured or having something break your skin. And then these sharps should be sterilized and or discarded. So typically in my micro lab setting, whenever we work with sharps, um, I'll take the sharps, throw them in the sharps container, and then at the end of lab, I'll blast them in my autoclave, which is effectively just a really thick pressure cooker. And then after blasting in the autoclave, I put them in a cardboard box, label them sharps, and then duct tape it up, and then dispose of it at the end of the semester after I fill up the box. Now reusable meters and other sharp devices need to be heat sterilized and um, repackaged before they are handled again. Now when we look at dental precautions, hand pieces should be sterilized in between patients during dental precautions. And if we can't sterilize, we should have a high level of disinfection. So wipe the surface down with sodium hypochlorite, also known as bleach or peroxide solution, typically going to be hydrogen peroxide. We should also remove all blood and saliva completely from contaminated dental instruments. So in other words, we need to make sure to clean everything and sterilize and or disinfect all surfaces. Again, just assume everything's highly pathogenic. When you wash hands, you should wash hands thoroughly. Um, the general rule is you wash hands when you walk into the room and you wash hands when you exit the room. These hand washing typically is going to be to be for about 30 to 40 seconds and make sure to wash in between your fingers, under your fingernails, on top of your fingernails, and to wiggle any jewelry around to make sure that you wash the um, inner surface of any rings that you may be wearing. Saliva precautions are generally speaking not going to be as stringent as blood precautions because saliva doesn't necessarily transmit as many pathogens as blood, but we still assume that saliva is going to be carrying pathogens. So make sure to use some kind of a barrier during all mouth to mouth resuscitations. And I think it goes without saying, don't make out with your patient as well. Now, when we look at healthcare worker precautions, you need to have <clears throat> standard PPE in place when working with any patients, but there are some special situations that you need to have a little bit of extra PPE for. For example, if you're working with somebody that has a draining skin or mucous membrane lesion, you really need to refrain from handling those patients or equipment that will come in contact with the patients unless you have that proper PPE. If you're pregnant and a healthcare worker, you really need to pay attention to these PPE guidelines because that growing fetus in the uterus is going to be much more susceptible to infection. We also need to have um, healthcare workers up on their vaccinations, get vaccinated whenever possible to reduce the chance or the risk of developing that primary or that initial infection during the primary exposure. 
And that is our universal blood and body fluid precautions. If you have any questions for me about this material, please feel free to post them on the discussion board or shoot me an email. Happy studies.